everyone. Happy Memorial Day. And um, it was the uh, Rochester Select Board meeting on May 27th, which has been posted publicly in three places and on the website and emailed to interested parties. So we're, um, we're conforming with the um, open meeting law. And uh, we're going to start with the prior meeting minutes of May 13th meeting, which I was not here for. So I'll let you guys decide whether or not those minutes. I read them online, and I thought that they looked fine. I read them, too, and I don't see any issue with them. I move that we accept the minutes. And I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's okay. for May 13th. All righty. And so, we have um, some guests. Um, Caitlin, you're um, here to talk about, I think, the um, um, baseball tournament. I'm going a little bit out of line, but since you're here for that, you don't need to sit through everything. You're welcome Perfect. to stay. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm here sort of on behalf of, like, the Rochester Fire Department. That's where, you know, the donations kind of went for the people playing baseball, softball. Um, we'd like to do it again on the Sunday, July 7th, just that one day tournament. Um, it would be the same thing as before. We would take care of the land and the garbage would be removed and the teams would donate a fee because we have to purchase balls and we have to get somebody to ref for the day. Um, it would be the same as before. We would be out of there by the afternoon and everything would be cleaned up. Sounds like fun to me. There are a couple new picnic tables down yes. there too. Yes, and there's a new dugout, <laughs> yep, on the other side. Um, and we did it twice last year. Uh, this can be at a different meeting. We would like to try to kind of expand it to make it more than a one day thing in September, but because July is so busy with the fourth, it's just gonna be one day and we can kind of discuss that in a different meeting, but we'd like to try to get more teams to make it more of a weekend thing in September when we do it. I, for one, think it's a lovely use of town property. So yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. That's what it's there for. Yeah. Play ball. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, thanks Good. for coming in. And, um, okay, we're going to... Um, <clears throat> We had the um, bids that were opened at the uh, last meeting for the retaining wall just outside the um, out uh, outside the town clerk's office here, and um, I don't know if I need to reiterate which ones. With what we had, uh, forty-three thousand four hundred thirty-five dollars from Blue Mountain Trucking and Excavation, and. Um, no, 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 no. Aldegetti Construction, Blue Mountain Trucking was 98100 and um, ECS. ECS was 44988 and um, I am going to move that we um, award that bid to Aldegetti Construction for $43,435,000. I second that. Yep. All in favor? All right. Aye. Yep. All right. To them. And then we also have the um, bid for the skate space, um, which we had one bid submitted. And um, oh, cricket, so, oh, there you are. You moved. I was going to say, wow. <laughs> yeah, closer <laughs> to the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, um, and we had Cricket's um, encouragement to move ahead with this. Yep. Yeah, he, he, I think was probably our best candidate in terms of past experience with similar kind of yep. outdoor yep. exterior slab work due to his background in skate park stuff, and he's a yep. good, honest guy. That, in my experience, working with him on other projects, so I think it's so that was standard construction and the amount mm -hmm. of ninety-two thousand one hundred five dollars. Yeah, yep. and Dean has indicated that he's asked the SU. Um, supervisory union to maybe see if they can fill in that gap because they had promised previously that they would contribute some to the project. They are having a little trouble with the Agency of Education because it's not on school property, but they're trying really hard because I think from a um, 
personal level, they, they say, well, we promised and we want to. So I think that's still in flux whether or not that money can come through, but he's trying really hard, and they seem to be trying really hard to fill in that. Um, I think they had raised 85K or something mm -hmm. close to the 90K, but bit. not quite. Yeah. But yeah. Dean feels like somehow he, he can come up with the extra six or seven, yeah. whether from the SU or... So I would uh, move to approve the bid from standard construction. I second that. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. What is the time frame? Um, I'll answer for that first. That's a good question. The skate space, the requested time frame was like from either from when school gets out to when school starts, like just now. for logistics. <laughs> yeah. like this June fifteenth to August fifteenth, or you yeah. have to go end of August, just because construction project plus school seems a little <coughs> hairy. And, and so it's still this year. This year. Great. Yep. And Jeff knew that. So, um, who? Quick question: Who would you like to? contact both of those two folks. Would you like Dean or myself or you guys? doesn't matter to me. Uh, we can send them a letter, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it would probably yeah. be best if we did yeah, it. I, think so. I would yeah. need to include a contract and all that anyway, so yeah, right. I could put together yeah. the packet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Just kind of your standard. Mm -hmm. standard. They yep. have to have the insurance and all that. So. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so we should do that. I'll let them know they'll be hearing from you. I'll just put it that way. Yeah, yeah. we'll notify them. Yep. Cool. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. You. Appreciate your oversight. Yeah, I did. I emailed you guys a good tab for the retaining wall. So if you want hard copy these, I've got some. Okay. Just because cool. those those were close and worth tabulating mm -hmm. in case anybody wanted to. And you uh, will you have words with him anyway? With Derek? With Derek. I let him know that you'd be deciding tonight, and I can informally say he'll, you'll be hearing from them. Yeah. If, if, yeah. if you, that's okay with you. That's yeah, I just, reasonable. I'm not familiar when a start date for him will be, or whatever. Um, Do you have any that indication? That is, is kind of like when you can start to get in the water for the permit, which okay. is, I think it is July 1st. could be July 15th, but I'll double check. And he knows that that's... Yeah. based on the stream alterations permit because pretty much first thing you're going to do okay. is get rid of the old wall which is getting into the water so right and i i will inform the landowner so. good thinking yeah yeah just to let him know that that's yeah it's actually if there is a date year. happening i just want him to know yeah that's all yeah yep. very good cool thank you guys all right um next on the agenda we um we're asking uh, the select board to uh, agree to abate the 23-24 taxes, um, um, taxes due, I presume, under $5, um, totaling $36.47. That's so basically just the odd bits here and there that have um, fallen through the cracks. And mm -hmm. I think that it's, um, it's not worth chasing that down for that. So I would move to approve that. I second. All in favor? All right. Aye. All right. Okay. <clears throat> um, now we've got the bids for our local hazard mitigation plan, the LHMP. Uh, we put out a request for proposals, and we got three. Mm -hmm. um, we've got one from Two Rivers Ottaquichi Regional Planning Commission for $9,828. We've got one from Seam Solutions, and that is for $9,600. And the last one from um, OPH Consulting Services, and that came out to be $8,900, all pretty close. Uh, we're going to take some time to read the details and look more closely, but now we've got the bids in and we'll. Uh, Award them. Our next meeting. Our next meeting. Yeah, yeah. So. Um. Excuse me. Yep. The second one, Dean Solutions. What, what was the name of the word? I couldn't hear yeah, you. Very I'm soon. sorry. It's S E A M. S E A N. M. M. Seam. S E A M. M like in like in Martha. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sorry to bother you. Thank you. Yeah. If you want to know more about them, you can find them at seamsolutionsvermont.com. Out of Waitsfield? Is that the one out of Waitsfield? Uh, yeah. Out of Waitsfield. Yeah, um, Barry. 
Barry. Oh. Okay. One's Waitsfield, Barry, and the other one's Two Rivers. Yep. Yeah. All right. Oh, oh wait. It's not been right. Um, we have a park use application for a graduation party on June 16th from 12.30 to um, 5 o'clock. Um, I would move to approve that. I second that. Yeah. Nothing else going on that day? No. Nope. So, June 16th. Approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five twenty-seven. 27. Yes. And um, all right, um, Mason. I think you're here for a discussion about um, delinquent taxpayer page in the town report. Um, I'm grab this chair. Sure. Thank you, Cricket. Thank you, guys. Yep. Okay, well, uh, first off, uh, my June allergies have arrived, uh, so it might yeah. sound. Nasal. And, and uh, yeah, here we are in May. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it might, do, might kind of do, relate to that climate emergency declaration we passed mm -hmm. before. So hopefully I don't have an allergy attack here. Um, oh, yeah. I'm we'll working. know it if you do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the camera's on you. So. <laughs> Um, I was uh, surprised that this was actually going to be on Memorial Day. Uh, not, I just didn't realize this meeting, and, and it kind of relates partially to why I'm presenting all of this. My, my father was a, a post commander for the VFW uh, in Anchorage, Alaska, and I was one of those rugrats run, running around the post, uh, as uh, quite a few of the, uh, the veterans World War II, we're dealing pretty much with shell shock back then, and uh, one of the, the main treatments was uh, alcohol. Um, and, uh, and I see we have the POW flag, and you know. So, um, my, my interest is really about democracy and how, at a local level, we move forward with making sure that our citizenship uh, is well educated on the subject and, and in the process helping to create more participation. Um, now, at the annual meeting, this all got sparked with the uh, article that was passed, the Declaration, Article 15. And, um, I'm sure since it got passed, you've had, possibly have had a time to review it again and, and see how it relates to the subject I brought up in the sense of uh, how we relate to the delinquent taxes by our citizens who, prior to becoming delinquent, were probably paying their taxes as well as they possibly could and being citizens of the community. Now, there is some interesting situations that we're all dealing with now, and, and that's the, uh, the access to information. Uh, and when we publish uh, people who potentially are in a situation where uh, they're vulnerable, that information can be picked up and uh, used against them. And so I really feel that we do make a statement in the budget of the total of the delinquent taxes. And that could be all we need to do. I've heard, you know, that it is a it is difficult for people to think about this. They they, you know, they, they feel like it's a, a way to shame people into paying their taxes. But that's the whole issue here, is that we're not here to shame anyone. And uh, um, there is a process. It's called a, a tax sale, you know, if, uh, if uh, people fail to pay their taxes. And, um, 
and there may be ways to work into it. For an example, instead of listing their names, it could be parcel numbers instead of their names. Uh, so all I'm looking to see is more of a discussion ongoing on how we move forward um, with how citizenship participates in local government because the strength of local government is the the backbone for this this whole whole thing um, related to yeah and I think it did, did relate to the article that got passed I'm not sure how the article got put onto uh, the agenda uh, was it from the board putting it on the agenda? Uh, inclusivity hmm? the article about um, the, about inclusivity the declaration the declaration of, of inclusive that was in response to several years of a request from a, um, an outside um, small contingency of people that have been um, moving around the state, um, moving to, <coughs> to um, bring this to people's attention and to, to um, promote that, that concept and that, that, um, that value. And so we um, they asked them to come into meetings a couple times and present it and their reasoning and the, explain it. And so that's why we decided, well, let's take it to the, the town to see how they feel about that and if they want to vote to adopt it, which they did. Yep. It's, it's like 135 towns have already adopted right. it. There's yeah. A, yeah. There's yeah. a big group of towns that yeah. have already adopted Yeah, I was aware of And the of state it. adopted yes. it too, so that's yeah. the other mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. So that's why we took it up. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't looking for any you know, decision process tonight. I'm looking for an ongoing process that maybe at the, the next meeting or the meeting after it breaks down. Um, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe it, this is something, uh, uh, something that would come up at a town meeting to see what the town feels about it, you know, in terms of making it a democratic process. I don't oh, know that's where we're at. We're here. Yeah. Town meeting. <laughs> no, I meant the whole and town meeting. Annual, annual town meeting. Because this is a report that comes out for the annual town meeting, and we're talking about a page that's been in the annual town meeting for how long? A long time? Yeah, a long time, yeah. yeah. Forever. Forever. So, and then we could do research and in most about. Most towns. You know? I think most in, towns. In, in yeah. most towns of the state, it's yes. published. Yeah. 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 So, it, it, you know, it's um, not a, a snap decision to make at, at just our meeting, I'll bring it to a larger, you know. Audience, a larger audience, you know. On the thought of the parcel IDs, um, they're they're very easy to look up. There are apps on people's phones. There are hunting apps that tell you who the homeowners are. So if you had a parcel ID, it, it's just one tap away from finding out who that is. So you're not really. You so know, a parcel ID isn't uh, you. You don't just walk into the town clerk to. Not to anymore. To not go anymore. No. So it's All public online. information, yeah. parcel yeah. ID I numbers. I can you up yep. in four mm -hmm. minutes or less. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But also, we're at a, we're at a, a, in an era, an age of uh, full disclosure, open meeting law, um, and and you have have been an advocate for that. Uh, but now you're you're looking to suppress information when typically we're looking to get everything out there, everything included, so that the public can, can know everything about what's happening in the town. But now you want to take some of that I'm back. Not, I don't want to take it away. Anyone can come into the town clerk's office and review the delinquent tax list. Mm -hmm. Is it important in the annual report? Are there better things for the citizenship to be well, the, focusing on? Because we kind of all know where everybody, what page everybody goes to first. I, I think when people don't pay their taxes, it, it makes the town have to go look to borrow money to to supplement that, those taxes that, that because you default. you put those in your budget as money uh, money, money revenue that's going to come into the budget, and when people don't pay their taxes, that's money that you can't put on the revenue side 
that you have to sometimes go to the bank and borrow, which I costs think everybody that's on else. Our agenda that's coming up on our agenda to, is to everybody else that we yeah. have to borrow right. money because people aren't paying their taxes. So that's, right. and, that's and part and of the reason was, for it. Uh, so. An interest fee charge <laughs> right. on that. And, and we have worst to pay case scenario, too. it goes to tax sale. And uh, within a tax sale, what the require what is the requirement? Is it auctioned? Yes. Yeah. That's that's the, the final it's, step, it's, and then and and the town's looking at least the bottom line is covered. And then the taxes. there's a twelve month period after the right. auction <clears throat> for redemption. Redemption, but that's a twenty percent paid to the the person who's holding the lien, basically the Correct. auction. Correct. I don't know what the percentage is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fair percentage. It's yeah. a fair twenty percent. Yeah, I don't know. I've heard. I don't. I think it's sure. like twelve, but I, I'm not oh, sure. Maybe I so. thought it was like twelve. But. So, what is the triggering amount at which we start looking at a tax sale? Is it time overdue, or is it amount overdue? Or? <laughs> it's Communication by, is a yeah, lot to do yeah, with it too. Determined you know, like by the delinquent tax collector, <coughs> all, all of the above. All of the know, above. Yeah. yeah. It's all taken into consideration. Yeah. And there is new legislation this year on delinquent tax sales. Mm -hmm. which the delinquent tax collector is having to adhere to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And there's, they're not as, they're programmed towards the homeowner for them to be able to make arrangements to yeah. pay those delinquencies. And it's an expense it, to the town it, to conduct a mm -hmm. right. tax sale. So it's, you know, it's, the, I'm, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a last resort going to the tax sale, you know. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, it's it's there's so much information in our in our tax book that this is an important piece. Whether it's listed as parcel IDs rather than names, um, right? We could we could add more information to it, saying right, you know how right. much acreage is involved, and we already see how how many years delinquent someone is. So um, we could review the entire process. And it may subtract some information and put more information in. So, so it could possibly some people might like the idea that within the town annual report, it makes a statement that to re, to see that listing, please stop by the town clerk's office. That's that's a consideration that, that we could discuss. But they have it in. I mean, they would be in the report or not in the report. Is that what you're saying? No. We, we know what the total is in the budget of the delinquent tax, but the actual listing of those who are delinquent, we can have a statement in the town report saying, if you'd like to review the list, please come and visit the town clerk. Or go online. Is everything online now? In, in that respect, that yeah, all the delinquent taxes are online? I don't know. Is it no, no. There, it's no. in the town report. The town report that's online. Yeah. So at this stage of the game, should it be online? Well, that's um, kind of the opposite of the you know, your initial request to to. Just no, press that. The <laughs> I know it's, it's, it's so, more yeah. of the publication. <laughs> it's it's about the publication and what it uh, what it means to everyone, and why some people may not, you know, they feel sh like they can't even come to the Anna Town meeting. You know. Well, I don't know about that. I I disagree with you on that. Basically. Well, possibly. That just you know, yeah. yeah. I have, yeah no, I'm just that's, saying that's far fetched. If you ask me, if anybody has a right to come to any meeting, and whether or not they owe money or not, and if mm -hmm. they if they do, they have a right to speak up anyway. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't discriminate against that. We we never have. And as far as posting somebody's name in the in the uh, delinquent taxes, I think to some degree it's a de deterrent to not get your name in there so people are apt to pay not that that's a good thing I'm just saying it's it's yeah. it does deter people from not paying so, and some people they're just uh, having worked in the electric business and having to issue disconnect warnings for 21 years with with a electric company for people not paying um, it was always policy to make arrangements for people to pay before you ever went out to 
to shut them off and then you would be very very lenient if they're because you know people struggle and we all do at times and so you were always very lenient with whatever you were doing so you would allow people a chance to redeem themselves as best they could and you were willing to accept that and a lot of people some some people couldn't couldn't pay for whatever the reason but they would always make an effort to pay and so that's the same thing as what we do with taxes people come in and they can pay what they can pay and we're lenient with them Right. And that's just the way it works. Nancy, you had your yeah. hand up again. No, I was going to say it's the delinquent tax collector that really works with the individual property owner. Right. Mm -hmm. And that person, the delinquent tax collector, is the one who, who sets up um, plans and works with the individual to pay their taxes. Right. Yeah. So it doesn't go to tax sale. They, that's the least they want it. They don't want to see a tax sale. Nobody does. No. It's just not good business for anybody. So, right. and that's really the bottom line. Do we feel that the information that you just we just all talked about is information that is well understood by the the property owners? The process. I think it's certainly understood by the people who are delinquent and and who are working with the delinquent collector. Yeah. I think Certainly there's so many it. notices put out by the by the the department that they are well aware that there are options for whoever. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's kind of you can't. It's the old saying: you can, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. So right. you you put that information out there and try to get them to make an effort to do their payments. And um, but if you if they totally ignore whatever effort you're making, you can't do anything about that. Okay, well, i just like to see this be ongoing in discussion yeah. more, you know, not trying to solve anything. So we list out who's delinquent in taxes right, right now in the public meeting? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's no. a good idea. <laughs> This was also I worked as much really hard about to make sure I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I, I think that's all trying to pay our school taxes. Yeah, all. right. That's, that's all of us do. Yeah. <laughs> taxes aren't easy to pay. It's no. just part of living. That's all. So within the town report, though, I understand that the restrictions about how much we can afford to pay and and blah blah with the process. But what values does the town report have as a, also being a citizen manual? Um, one of the things that I found interesting with, with this declaration that just got passed mm -hmm. is that it happens at the annual meeting and it pretty much is gone. And I could see where a town report could have a page listing at least the last three initiatives, declarations that have been passed, and maybe make a reference that others in the past would be on a website or on the town uh, website. Uh, because that's our culture. That declaration is what this community believes in. It would be it, interesting to have a record back to that, like, like back in... Um, I just dove into it a little bit, like in um, 1948, the town voted to adopt daylight savings time and to light the streets, you know, that's, mm -hmm. and we still, we're still doing that, so that, that, and that was a declaration, held. and that was a decoration? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. the vote, it was a town vote, yeah, and, um, and, um, in the, in the 40s, they, um, they, um, voted on whether or not the town should allow baseball, moving pictures, lectures, and concerts on um, on Sundays. When did they get rid of the stockade in the park? The stockade, I didn't find that one, but I volunteer you to, to do some yeah. research and present us with some of this stuff. Um, <laughs> well, I did, oh, we have the history. You know, we right. have, um, I mean, there's some good ones. We, um, um, <laughs> the there was, <laughs> what was that? 
Okay. Yeah, there's, um, you know, the, um, the town in 2007 voted to impeach George Bush and Dick Cheney for crimes against humanity and a multitude of impeachable defenses. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff that we decide that kind of goes by the, the wayside. The good know? old days. Yeah, the good old days. Um, Not sure but, why we did. Yeah, but, um, but well, well, part is to make well, a statement. Do you, have, do you have the last three? Well, we also had, we adapted a climate emergency emergency declaration and to make climate change an integral focus for town planning, policy, and decision making to work towards a more renewable and efficient and resilient Whoa. community. So there's some, um, it's, it's, that's some, um, I, I can see your, Whoa. hello, yeah, you have uh, someone on Zoom? Yeah, it's Robert, Robert Franks. Yeah, yeah, what, what have you got oh. to contribute here? Well, there's a number of issues, but I, I, I wanted to know, doing your reading research, did you do the research or did someone I, else do that? I did the research, but I was just, um, I was, that is, was in support of my, um, I, I think that you know, Mason made the, you know, the suggestion that at least the past three, but um, there are probably some that have really, um, um, even beyond the past three, that would be still have um, some strong um, validity. Like in 2015, the town voted to call on the state legislature to create a public bank for Vermont, and the whole concept of a public bank that doesn't that that's actually lending money to people to help them, not necessarily to make money themselves, is, is a novel, a novel interest, you know, interesting Pay idea. Pay taxes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I, it's, um, it's a valuable I, I, I thought. Just, I, I, just, I just would like to say that some of your information is very intriguing regarding uh, just daylight savings and how did that come about. But I do have a question that is very specific. Uh, Monday, I, I believe this past Monday, there was a special meeting uh, to adjourn, to uh, commence at 8 a.m. regarding a skate park in Rochester. Why was that meeting canceled? Um, we didn't have a quorum. There is not a, not a quorum to to legally hold the meeting. It wasn't about that, and that was about skate space, which we about awarded that that bid earlier on in this meeting. So we just pushed that pushed that um, topic on in the wall. Yeah, a and also to award the bids for the retaining wall outside of the uh, town office here. So, but, but wait a second. Why, why did it have to be a special meeting and not a so um, board meeting? Well, and, I, and every, there's, um, there's what was a, the reason for that? Um, the reason for that was the um, moving into summer and the limitations of the ability to do construction in a stream bed. So there was a certain sense of urgency to get these um, these bids awarded and to move this project forward because it weather dependent. But um, but we could talk about this in the general um, comments later because right now we're in the conversation um, about the um, initiatives that the town has has taken and the um, and the recommendation or suggestion that Mason is making that making that perhaps we could um, have something in the town report that reminds us what we as a town have voted to agree upon in in the past. That's a it's a valid request. Well, that's uh, interesting. Yeah. There are four pages of that are available. In, in the town report, and um, uh, everyone loved the cover this year. Yeah. <laughs> um, that included the inside and the back. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. You can, next time, we could do a whole listing of all the decorations uh, as the piece for the cover. That's four pages right there. Nancy, you had a comment? The one thing that we do is we put the previous year's annual town meeting minutes in the current town report. So it's actually published twice. And also online. The results. Um, yeah. Previous year's 
and but, well, town minutes are, are yeah, I was speaking about the cover pit. No, well, no, well, she's, she's speaking. The, wait a second, Robert. That's, we're in a conference. She was speaking to the fact that last year's initiative is in yeah. each book because of the minutes for the last meeting. Right. 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 He wants, right. But he but wants to list prior initiatives. Yeah, list prior initiatives. So he wants yeah. to have something yeah. separate than just last year. Right. But the whole concept of being able to do citizen education and citizen participation. In, understanding our culture as a town, those initiatives are part of that culture, yep. which helps everyone have a, a foundation to work from. And uh, I, I don't want to confuse the issue of what the purpose is of the town report is a yearly synopsis of the town's business in the financial standing of budgets. And I think that's pretty much what the t annual town report is for. Now, if you want to put together a synopsis of over, like a census every 10 years where you look at initiatives that the town has passed over that period of time, that's well and good, and you can post that on the website. I don't have any issues with that. Say a page on the website might mm -hmm. be a good repository would, for would that. Would be better than the you town know, report, because we yeah. don't need to confuse this with a history book. This is like a yearly yeah. synopsis of what the town's financial situation is and where the budgets are, and that's where we need to keep it. Well, I understand I what you're saying, Frank, but at the same time, uh, it is one piece of information that every resident t uh, property owner receives. Now, voters, are, uh, they don't receive, they do receive the town report as voters, too. So it's something that everyone receives, and, and that gives us the opportunity to advance uh, better citizen participation. Um, now, I mean, this year, everybody enjoyed, you know, the wildlife edition on the, the four pages. Well, did that really have anything to do with the budget? No, it's just a cover. That's well, all it is. We got four pages that we could utilize for doing something like a historical uh, understanding of the declarations that have occurred, plus other general information that may be discovered that uh, people would appreciate refreshing themselves or learning for the first time as voters. Um, Hello. Do you have a comment on this, oh, this, this conversation? Yes. Yeah. I wanted to ask uh, the select board members, in August, do they have a, a percentage of how much our property taxes are going to increase? Can um, Patty Harvey answer that, Frank? Oh, by the way, Frank, I think of pay every day. I just well, want you to know I'm in your heart. But I and do. Robert, could we? I'm, I'm could, could, asking you what percentage. Wait, you know what, is Robert? The property you're, taxes. You're 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 veering it's off of the point. conversation that we're right in the middle of right now. Why don't we? No, bring it's, this up? it's part of the conversation because everything's going to change on the next. This uh, is actually, bill. yeah, that's. It's going to go up. To, well, obviously, you don't know what the number is. Not in August. What's the number? We don't know. We don't not, know yet, Robert. This is not, then that's not the conversation we're having right now. This is, um... Well, it's uh, a conversation that Mason has brought up with regards to delinquency. It's going to double. Okay. Okay. Or, or not. So, obviously, not, okay. uh, you, Frank, and Patty don't know the percentage that the, the governor's office, the uh, speaker of the house, said what is going to happen. It's going to be a shell shock to the people of Vermont and the people that are trying to struggle to pay their taxes. It, it, yeah. it, it's gigantic. So, uh, Do you have any? Um, it's a very important thing. Any recommendations? It's a tsunami. How to um, make that not happen? At this point, 
the tsunami has already coming is already coming to Vermont. Thank you. It's going to be. Thank you. Well, we're, we're going to have to weather that storm. Uh, we don't have um, any solutions for that here at the uh, at the table today. But it's at this, um, at this yeah. level, yeah. yeah. Well, the the yeah. point I'm trying to make is that is that what Mason's bringing up is that that the number of delinquent taxpayers is going to go double or three times because we cannot afford 85% of taxes going to the education department when Rochester's trying to survive. Yep. It's in Bethel. Yep. There's, Same um, thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We, we hear, hear your concern and, and we share it. Yeah. Um, so, to continue just so we can get to a conclusion, um, I was feeling that one of the um, better elected officials that might be able to handle this with uh, an ongoing situation, that is a kind of a fresh concept, is uh, Julie uh, being the town clerk. Uh, and the association of the town clerks who are pretty actively involved with trying to uh, encourage better citizenship participation in, uh, in what they have presented. And it could be a situation where it's kind of ongoing with the town clerk uh, with uh, a potential um, advisory group that could be you know, of, of a way to help participation in that way. But basically, uh, letting the town clerk be in charge of how the process could move forward with better, as better citizenship manual concept, which could or could not be included in the town report. You know, it all depends on if we actually we may actually realize that um, a citizen manual may help overall in our ability to pay and earn the monies that we need in the future with that. So those are basically, I think that's about where I was at tonight, was in that discussion of those items as such. The only thing I have to say about that, Mason, is I certainly don't want to volunteer Julie to do any more than what she's doing at present. Um, I'm sure her schedule is pretty well packed, along with Kristen's, too. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, and, and possibility she would have to oversee something, but I don't think we need to put her in a position where she needs to do a lot of extra on this. I really don't, because she's loaded up enough as it is. There's too many people that depend on her for so many different things. I, I, and and I, anybody I, I, that's interested in town government that wants to get involved, they can, the information's available to them. They can come into this office. They can look. I mean, we ask for volunteers to just help with, with appointments, and we usually get nothing. So well, this is what and we, we put are, this out. This we is, put this out sorry. verbally and on the website too, mm -hmm. and and we don't get any volunteers to come out. Well, so, this is what I'm talking I mean, about a citizen manual and I, for. And I hear that. And I hear and, what you're saying. I, but I, I don't feel, want to put her in a position where she has to do a lot Julie more. Julie is also the paid employee, but she right. is uh, a neutral individual who works with an association that works on democracy issues. Now, there's no timeline here. It, it can flow as a concept that the town clerk is understanding that is being supported to develop over a, a, an extended I time. I can see her having the, the, the ability to present people with they request a, a, of a document, a manual that you're talking about, but in terms of developing it, that maybe that's something you could volunteer to do. Now, are you speaking about a citizen manual in the terms of the annual report or a separate booklet that would be a handbook for Rochester residents? Go for it. it go for it. Either way. We volunteer either you. I, I could actually see the cover 
the, the four pages right there being a citizen's manual for a starter. Okay, you still want it to be folded into the town report. Well, I, I think that's what everybody sees, and they sit down, and they have a cup of tea, and they yeah. read it, and it's a once a year. After, Come up with a draft. It would be nice to see years, what, what see your vision, how your vision crystallizes. I, I'm it. here doing it right now. You know, no, I, but because I think I'm too, I'm, I'm, You're too, busy. I'm too... No, I'm no. too controversial. Too controversial? I, that's I why a town oh. clerk is not controversial in the process. Yeah. I would be happy to be involved with an advisory group, but I'm not in a situation that I think this town would like to see me doing that. Well, if you came with a, a draft of what you're presenting, hold on, Robert, we're in the middle of a conversation here. You're interrupting. The, um, if, but if you could come up with a draft, I think that would be a good starting point. That doesn't I'm not make sure what a draft means. You know, well, but I, you. I'm not sure what that means. I, well, it, I guess if you don't know what it means, then no, how are no, we going to know what you're presenting? No, a draft is like a finished document. That's not right. what. No, a draft is starts. a word. No, document. Document. Well, it's yeah. not a finished document. Draft is a framework. It's a framework to it. Right. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I don't think that's where my place. My place is to look at a well, framework. Well, we're open and for volunteers to help do with these kind of ideas, though, you know? And that's actually, something. tonight I'm volunteering yeah. as a citizen to be here, too. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah. okay. Okay. You know, yeah. in the sense yeah. that. It's important to have well, a bipartisan person who is involved with an organization, the Vermont uh, Town hello. Clerks, who are looking at these issues and can okay. actually present. Yeah. And I'm sure that they have some uh, uh, open drafts already. I know it'd be great for if you could do the research and see that, but um, I'm not going to ask Julie to to add that to her list right now. That's um, like I said, it would be. I'm well, sure she'd well, be glad to present people. I with understand a, what you're saying, but she's document. not. A, yeah. she's also not a town employee. She is an elected official. Right. Well, I guess I'll let you speak for yourself. What do you think, Julie? Julie? <laughs> this year is not so much, but I mean, it's something in the future, maybe, but. With it being a voting year, it's really difficult this year to find extra time. But I'm willing to reach out to the clerks if that's what you, and see if there is something of a draft. I, I don't know. I've not heard, but. Would you be willing to check on that at some point? Yeah, I can send out an email at least. Yeah. Isn't the purpose of the town report to present the town's finances yes. and position? Yes, yeah, that's all. Yeah. That's, that's the point Frank is making. It isn't making. intended to be a, a, a manual <laughs> for other things. Yes. Right. right, exactly. I feel and like we, on the, on the Secretary of State's website, there are manuals like for the town clerk, for the treasurer, I'm sure for the select board. Zoning. So there are manuals in that sense. I, I don't know if that's what you mean. He's he's looking at a manual to Not encourage voter, voter participation in, in, in local government is what he's looking at. I can well, really see that as being a page on the website that could right. you know, I, lead to endless information. And, and, and it would save paper, which would be according to well, the government initiative. <laughs> It's not sitting down and looking at the town report. We're trying to make the town report. I, I'm just saying. I well, like I say, we got four pages right here to start off with to cover, inside outside. Hello. Okay. Well, well, it's um, it's a, it's well, a good so conversation. We'll consider yeah, we'll, we'll keep it in so the data rather so than if I could say. Well, wait, um, one second, Rob. We have one person in the room. That what we're we gonna say? Um, I've been having a mute game with Robert apparently I've been putting him on mute because of the feedback that he's putting through the owl into the room mm -hmm. um, and every time I put him on mute he unmutes and so now I've lowered the volume so when we can hear his TV or his whatever it is in the background that it's not blaring mm -hmm. so I just wanted to be forthcoming with the mute back and forth that okay. we've had and he's so, currently unmuted right now okay so Robert do you have do you have something to add to this the comment this 
um, yeah. thank you. conversation about well, this? Well, taking, taking, taking everything in <laughs> with regards to Mason's commentary, you, Mason. with okay. regards to Patty and Frank and you, uh, I, I would like to know who manages the website because the volunteer department that Frank talked about there's no, there's no item on the on the web on the town of Rochester's website, the volunteer to support democracy. It, it's like, where is that? And I, I really want to confirm, who updates the website? Who, who's in charge of that? You didn't say it was on there. I, who is I'm, it? Norm Christensen. It's a little both Norm Christensen and myself. Yeah. It's when we can. Yeah. It's. Well, it's, it's you know, it's like Mason said, it, you know, these pub, uh, uh, printed documents with regards to town business and so on, that that is a, a consideration that most people understand that it will be online. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's just a thing. And Rochester is so behind on the public digital communication, they're worse than Front Porch Forum. I mean, if you guys are going to put this stuff out or ask for volunteers, why in God's world doesn't your website say that? I, I, I volunteer everywhere I can. And I have never seen an item on the Rochester website regarding volunteers for this, that, or the other thing. And it's something that I, 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 you know, as you know, I am not a resident of Rochester. I'm a resident of Bethel. Right. But it's, it's a serious issue. People driving up from Connecticut or New York, they go to the website. And if the website is delinquent, well, you know, the town the, is delinquent. I believe on the website, if they look at the the town reports, and and I think it pretty much. Uh, oh, so you want me to you want me to delve report, into seven hundred pages of a town report? I mean, what are you that's, saying? That's where we often. Um, often in, encourage people to uh, and recognize the volunteers and encourage people to volunteer yeah yeah that's well that's um, why you have no volunteers because okay. they don't they don't have the time to delve into the uh, pages and pages of town reports okay well it, it that, should say volunteer we get it we get it for the park for the park house for anything to do okay robert we're gonna we're, we um we've got your point and we're gonna move on to the next item on the agenda but um well, wait a second no i do wait robert, a second we, you, no, have, said, you like to volunteer you, got, you no whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you said you got my point your point is what is my point your point is that you like to talk and you like to talk about what is important to you, but right now we are working on the agenda for the posted meeting of the town of Rochester. So we know that you okay, do not so approve one, of the website. Have, no, and, whoa, 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 wait a second. And wait, Robert, I, I don't like question. to have to mute you, but you tend to hijack the conversation, and that's what I'll have to do. I, we know you don't like our town website, um, and we're going to we're going to move on with the agenda we have um, an opportunity for public comment at the end of the agenda and if you want to hang out long enough we can let you talk a little bit more then but um, we've already given you um, plenty of time in the middle of our agenda here so I would like to move on to item 9 which is the April treasurer's report and um, thank you Kristen for preparing that, and um, I'd move to accept and approve that. I second that. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think it's mentioned twice as well. Yeah. There's that one for you. And then we have, um, um, this is interesting, we have a um, first class hotel oh, license liquor for, for, I forgot to put the okay liquor yeah <laughs> liquor hotel and liquor license for the Huntington house and when I was looking 
at the historical initiatives um, in the town of Rochester back in like um, 1918 or so, it was a, a yearly decision whether or not to allow the sale of spiritous um, liquids in the town. And so now we do it, um, um, you know, business by business. So it still uh, it kind of echoes from, from the past, which is kind of cool. So I'd moved to approve at the Huntington House for their first class um, liquor license. I second that. And they also have an application for their um, third class um, license. I second license. that. And, uh, all, all in favor for those aye, two? Aye, okay. aye. All um, right. Passed. Thank you. And we have, um, this is interesting, um, speaking of tax, um, there is a, a new payroll tax for child care deduction for town employees, um, for any employees. All employees. All employees. And the um, decision we're asked to make now is whether we choose to pass on the allowable, what is the percentage, um, it's a percentage of a percentage. It's 0.44 percent. Less than a half of a percent. Less than a half of a percent. Whether, um, as an employer, the town has to pay this contribution, and right. the decision we'd be making now is, do we want to share that new tax? We could only share a portion, a portion of, that of that tax with the employees, and I think most entities being business or municipal are voting to not charge out to That's their employees. my thoughts also. Yeah, and that the town would cover it all. Yeah, it's yeah. just more more um, busy work and, and for a small amount of money yeah, and it's... Um, just a yeah, few yeah, bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And, so. and it's not fair to ask the employee to yeah. pay that. We could, we could probably swing that for them. Yeah. Is that active in July 1? Yes. Well, yeah. it remains nice and low. Yes. Well, it remains <laughs> nice and low. Right, right. If it stays within. All right. So, we're our, that's, so I move that our decision is for um, to not to pass the portion Correct. of that on to I the I second boys. that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, this also relates to a previous discussion about tax and delinquent taxes. Our, um, we have a request. Um, to apply for a tax anticipation note um, with Mascoma Bank, which is basically getting money to cover the delinquent. What is the Well, it's, it also covers while we're waiting for the tax bills to come out. Um, for the next installment. For the next yeah. installment, so. Yeah, and it, which is a pretty common financial move from the mm -hmm. town, part of the town, so. And we'd have to like first ask your permission and then we would go to the lawyer we have to fill out cash flow sheets to get an amount and then um, we would bring it back to you for approval yeah 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 so i would um i would move that we start that process i second that all in favor Aye. Aye. Yeah. okay and then the um the Vermont statutes annotated, which are those green books over there that we've been getting um, for free throughout the years, um, their state is now um, going to start charging $400 a year for them, and seems to me that with the um, the um, frequency which which they change the statutes and the uh, the ease with which you can find them online, I don't know if it's worth paying $400 mm -hmm. to. You get a bunch of books in the corner. Right. So what do you guys think? Save the paper. Save yeah. the paper. I it's agree. a climate initiative decision. Yeah, it's a climate <laughs> initiative decision. No more paper. Okay. <laughs> so um, we can say thanks but no thanks to the state. Correct. Yes. Right. We'll look All it up right. online. Okay. Um, do we have anybody from the library here to talk about stuff online? No? no. Um, and Terry is not here to talk about the utilities. I noticed that they've been um, flushing the hydrants. Yes. I was like, wow, what happened back there? Like, oh. <laughs> um, they got Brook Street painted, yeah. paved. Yeah, I saw that. So that's all yep, yep, set. Yep. Um, I'm not sure what his next move is. I haven't spoken to him. Um, we did have a, um, I got an email request from someone living up in the hollows to say, boy, it would sure be nice to mow now to knock the shovel down before it puts out the seed. Yeah, but, he's but not uh, scheduled for that. No, it's not scheduled. Can. That would be one. 
Is that the Fourth of July? It takes about forty years. Yeah. To, yeah. To not. I've been down. I've been mowing my roadside in front of my house mm -hmm. for forty years, wow. and I've just about it killed it. But when they paved, you know, three years ago, they dug out the ditch, and I thought for sure they'd reseed it with. Shervil, oh, yeah. and yeah. sure enough, there's shervil coming up. Mm, yeah. mm. But it, it took me 40 years yeah. to get rid of it. Um, Jeff, um, you got what have you got? Well, it's nice to see you back in the room again. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess first time I've driven since November. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, I'm here uh, about Vermont Buildings and General Services um, yeah, Municipal Energy Resiliency Program community capacity building mini grant wow. um, and uh, seeking the board's authorization to submit an application to uh, buildings and general services uh, for four thousand uh, dollars primarily to be used uh, by the energy committee in the, in the town um, as a energy coordinator one of the roles the state sees is working with local energy committees and the energy committee and the community has been paying out of pocket for farm uh, for, for the uh, farmers market uh, tables for instance and we're not objecting to that mm -hmm. it's just that we'd rather not be paying out of our own pocket on that when there's grant money available yeah. to amplify the work of the energy committee uh, so, if I have the authorization I would uh, put in what you saw on the application and hit the submit button. Um, $4,000 would come and, and the, town, the town treasurer is the one who would be uh, making payments out of that. I, I would work, or the energy committee would work with the town any way you want to set up the process. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be true. Um, interesting. Yep. Um, I think that sounds good to me. I move yeah. to to authorize you to go ahead and make that application. Yeah. yeah. Falls in with our town plan yeah. too. So. Yep. And starting yeah. now, if you can just include me on everything and anything, mm -hmm. that would be great. Thank you. you. Start so, your book. Yeah. One of the things that uh, you know I, I, we see as a, poten a potential is uh, community energy resilience meetings. Um, as a, as a way to get more volunteers, get more people uh, assisting in the housing committee work, um, the, the farm hub, and the energy committee. Um, when I, we had uh, two years ago, I think, the Rochester Area Climate Initiative and the meetings in Pierce Hall, and we looked at uh, what town issues were and pri prioritized them, and I think it would be good and helpful to get the community back together again to see what has happened and to see what uh, new ideas or new directions uh, people come up with. How are we doing with our resiliency zone? Um, I haven't heard a peep from GMP. I, of course, hey. like everybody else, I see the telephone poles uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> coming up 100. I have not taken a drive up into the gravel pit to see. There, there, uh, I know there is some process that they have to go through for the batteries storage unit. Um, the, the farm is in land use, so there's an issue with the battery system being on a land use land, and so that was some litigation that they were going through. And also, Green Mountain Power is in the process of reconducting the village, which they've got their main wire run through to the bridge. Uh, but they haven't recon they haven't energized that yet. It's all grounded still. Um, and then they'll have to do a voltage conversion in the village before anything can happen there. And the section between my house and the bridge at 73 needs to be built before they'll do any of that because that's how they'll power 73 after they get the voltage conversion done. Because then it'll be just one line and they'll eliminate the line in back of the school that's from the, the uh, 
uh, septic system in back of the school to Route 73 that's present. So that's where that's at right now. Is the litigation over the... I, I don't know exactly where that stands, Jeff. I know the pit is not... It's, it might be in the land trust issue. I'm, I'm not even sure how, where that is. That's all up to them. And the, the pit is still not in the condition that it has to be. They did some test holes up there for placement of where they were going to put the panels. And I don't know exactly how those came out. Um, I don't think it, there was any issue with that part of it. They just aren't prepared to, to make the field work yet so that's still in litigation I think to some point so that's as much as I know about it at this at this present um, so applying for that grant kind of segues into asking Kristen what's new in the grant world with you not a whole lot. Um, I am currently working on the reimbursement for Rogers Brook um, that Cooter finished up on Bethel Mountain. So I'll be submitting that hopefully by the end of the week. Um, I don't have final numbers yet. So next meeting I should be able to give that. Okay. Um, One other grant related thing. Yep. June is when we <coughs> heard that uh, our level two um, energy audits of this building and the town garage, or that's when the likely scheduling will be. Oh, good. Okay. Come right up. Excuse me, Dune? Yeah. Um, it's Martha. I have a quick question if it's possible. Sure. I noticed at the bottom of the agenda, it says next meeting, June 10th, will be in the high school auditorium, but I'm not unsure as to why. Is that something you're going to discuss later or why what? Your next informational meeting. Oh, that would be the um, next informational meeting for um, about the um, Rochester potential high school um, reuse. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we're going to combine that with the select board meeting. We figured we'd have it in the school auditorium since that's the the topic of the um, of the day. There's a notice in the Herald, Martha. Okay, I I I thought I'd seen something, but I just wanted to make sure I was correct. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, I was going to um, bring that up, so I guess it does bring that up. That we'll have yet another. Um, um, informational meeting about the high school project and hopefully um, some even more information than we had last time. Yeah. Um, on the um, old business, uh, I see John Lambert's not here, so I'm presuming that things have stabilized at, um, in his neighborhood with the dog problem. So. I have no nothing further. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, so now that brings us to the um, opportunity for public comment. Robert, if you're still out there, you can, um, if you have anything else on your mind, you've got three more minutes to, to chat. Dune, it's very kind of you to welcome me back into the meeting. I just want to gradually and handshake Cooter and the road crew of Rochester doing a great job. They do. And the Brook Street paving, the grading, the whatever the boys have done, they continue to do a great job. I agree. And so, no, it's amazing. It's almost like a miracle when they get things done, whether it's winter, summer, fall, or whatever. But they, Kuda does, what is it? his name is John? I think John Champion? Yes. Thanks, yep, that's well, another reason the they do such a good job. We don't want to burden them with that whatever point four four of this <laughs> child care tax addition to their, we don't need to take any more money out of their paychecks. Or we, we all really appreciate them, all the, all the workers we have for the town. Well, now I have a question. And I, I just, you didn't get a chance to answer it the last time I was involved. Uh, why 
is why was the, a special meeting put forth to the public regarding a skate park at 8 a.m. on a Monday? We folded what, what, that. What was the reason? We for that? folded that in with the. It was a bid. Opening bid. A, a bid opening, and that was folded in with the. Um, we were going to award the. Okay. We were going to award the contracts on the, on that Monday, on that so Monday. that the, retaining the people, all in skate space. Right. So that people We'd already could get the get started on the the work and the um, retaining wall, which was along with you. You're talking about the skate space, but that was also with the the retaining wall out here, which has been we've been working on that for a long time, and that is is weather dependent. So that was the the um, the nudge to move that ahead to a special meeting just because these people that gave us these bids, they're waiting to hear whether or not they got the job so they can know whether or not they need to bid on more jobs. So it was a little time sensitive that way. We well, do not, think, do not think that the public, the town taxpayers of Rochester were not uh, uh, available at 8 a.m., to, to beat a bid that was put forth for the retaining wall and inclusive of the skate park. This is something that should have been brought up to the select board. It was. Not, it, 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 was. It, 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 it was, actually. This has been talked about in, um, in previous meetings, and so and it was announced. That's why we canceled it, but in in honor of the open meeting law, because um, it was warned. Well, no, why, why, what, no, what, no, so, so, what wait, was the reason for the cancellation? We, we answered that earlier in the meeting. There was a lack of a quorum because schedule conflicts. We, I well, you mentioned that in an email that you sent me. me to... Emergencies happen. Well, it was yeah. due to a heart attack. <laughs> no, no, not that. No, then. I oh, ha I had oh a... Patty Harvey. Yes, sir. No, no. There is, there is... I had an MRA she... at the Gifford Hospital that morning at 8 o'clock, so I was not able to attend. And I was scheduled for an appointment with my wife that I wasn't aware of when we scheduled the meeting. And I was out of town, so 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 we had to cancel. Well, well, you know what? That 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 is great, but that's why the website needs to be updated currently, day to day, not month to month, because I I have very deep feelings about Frank's uh, uh, security of his wife Faye. I have I have deep thoughts about Rochester and economic development. But I'm like, what, what is the reason? So you, you people, the select board, what's, what's the public? People driving from Connecticut, where Patty Harvey's from, and they're, they're looking at the website going, what is with this town? Yep, yep, that's, um, that's the so I, 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 What I'm saying is I would recommend that uh, Julie Smith, the town clerk, and whoever manages the website, they need to pull up their bootstraps and announce whether it's a volunteer position, whether it's Brook Street being paved, whether it's the Bethel Mountain Road being closed. Okay. It needs to be forthwith. Okay, we got that. Thank you for your three minutes of input, Robert. And um, if there's anyone else... Well, I, ap I appreciate... No, that is... Um, yeah. I appreciate... Yeah, you got... Yeah, thank you. Um, Frank, hmm? should we talk about the park? Yeah, Are you there? yeah, we're um, we're moving on, we're moving on to another. Well, I'm uh, getting I'm getting uh, very upset with being muted by the Robert? Christian. And she's Wait, dead. I thought I was a Wizard of Oz. Um, she's. <laughs> we're we're trying to. We gave you your time to talk, Robert, <laughs> and we're um, going to move on and well, share the not, time with us. By people. the way, yeah. This is not laughable. Well, it's, it's important. It's um, and okay. Kristen does you not have you. the authority. Kristen, to I give you the authority and to unmute me, me. Robert, please. Thank you. Done. Yeah. Uh, he'll be back um, in two seconds. All right. I'll turn the right. volume down. Now I'm turning yep. the volume down. Just the last thing, um, we planted nine new trees on the park. They're in great shape. I hope that people stay away from them and at least 
so they don't run things over. Glad it's raining on them now. And we're gonna we're gonna yeah. eventually put some screening around them, um, and we are gonna mulch the trees again. At at some point, I'd like to think in the next couple weeks. So we'll be looking for volunteers to come in and help us do that. Um, I so. saw two of your volunteers on Saturday. Hey, oh, did you? Kevin and did, Bruce. Oh, did you see Kevin? <laughs> with yeah. with tractors and rakes. Yeah. Oh, great. Perfect. So okay. it won't take as much mulch this year because we did it last year. It'll just be freshening it up a little bit and doing the nine new ones. We do have four other trees that we're looking at having to take down due to they're just not healthy anymore there's one on the front an oak that's got some rot in the bottom i think that's killing it pretty much it's and we didn't realize a, that when and, they weren't leaked out right and and there's a maple and there's that i don't know what kind of tree that other one is over the dead one yeah, yeah they're all looking a little there's yeah. a couple of them there that are looking pretty dead and yeah. and some of the ones that are looking a little dead we're going to leave to see if they do come back because some of them are coming back but one was a norway maple yeah one's in that's for the next meeting. oak yeah it's yeah. some sort of oak i think but there's you know we will be doing those later and there's a bunch of branches there around those ash trees that are we're having to hire a guy come in to uh clean those up because they're broken and hanging up there so we need to take care of that insurance wise and he can't do it until after memorial day which probably will be the first of next month so they're they're building up more expenses all the time for maintenance of the trees on that place so but we have to do it but we have nine beautiful trees. But the new trees are gorgeous. They really are. To join the six we put in last year. And you um, spread the roots out in the bottom and didn't put them in the bottom. <laughs> well, the problem is with the roots, they're too dry. Yeah. They, we watered, they watered them before we stuck them in the ground. And then, but be, by the time we got to the ninth one, the, some of the root balls were dry mm -hmm. because the trees were sucking the water out of the mm -hmm. out of the burlap and some of them so some of them are a little crooked but we'll have to straighten them but we couldn't do it the yeah. root ball was so dry that we were just breaking it apart so we have to maybe use a little encouragement on yeah. pulling them sideways a little bit yeah. after they they're going to be apart. beautiful but they'll come out fine all right that's our um Anyone else have anything to contribute tonight? Then I would Zoom move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Okay.